Welcome to the DAS how-to series where we tell you all about caring for your concrete countertops. Concrete is porous, which means it has to be sealed to protect against stains. We seal our counters with a professional grade penetrating sealer, which soaks into the concrete and closes off the pores, providing a buffer against stains and ensuring that any stains and etches that do occur remain on the surface for easy repair. We choose to use a penetrating sealer because it preserves the heat and scratch resistance of the concrete itself, is easy to reapply when the time comes, and perhaps above all, because it allows for easy repairs when life happens. But on the downside, it does not prevent etches. Concrete, much like marble, is very sensitive to acid etching. Etches are not stains, but rather chemical reactions between the acid and the cement paste in the concrete. Major culprits are vinegar, lemon juice, and vinegar-based sauces, and to a lesser extent, wine. Etches will be lighter than the concrete itself, and depending on how long the acid sat on the surface, may feel rough to the touch. If you're working with acids on a concrete surface, use a cutting board or mat and wipe up any spills immediately to minimize the risk of etching. But as careful as we can be, etches can and will likely happen. No one goes through life unscratched, not even concrete countertops. That being said, anything can be fixed, and you can do it yourself in about 15 to 25 minutes. Here's how. Step one, gather your materials. You're going to need a few things to get started. Firstly, a set of hand polishing pads. For our counters, which are highly polished, we recommend a set that runs from 50 to 3000 grits. The lowest number is the coarsest, while the highest number is the finest grit. You'll use the coarser pads to remove the layer of etched concrete, which should be quite thin if your sealer is intact. Then the higher grits are used to repolish the surface once the etch has been removed. You will also need a spray bottle filled with water, dry and lint-free rags or paper towel, and some sealer to finish it off. Step two, prepare your space. It can be helpful to use rags to mark off the area you'll be working on. Start by marking off an area just a little bit bigger than the area affected by the etch marks and gradually move the rags out as you proceed. This will help you avoid repolishing a bigger area than necessary. The rougher the grit you start with, the more work you'll have to do to repolish. So don't necessarily start with the lowest grit in your kit. It will depend on how deep the etch is, but a good rule of thumb is to start with 200 grit and go down from there if it's taking too long. Focus on the area where the etch marks are with the rougher grits and gradually expand the area that you are polishing as you climb higher, moving your rag markers as you go. This will help ensure that the newly polished surface blends nicely into the existing area around it. Also, remember to wipe down the surface before you start and occasionally as you go to remove any debris that might get stuck under the polishing pads and cause scratches. Now let's get started. Start by spraying the area to be repaired with water until the surface is completely wet. Keeping your movements focused on the etched area, use small overlapping circles to vigorously buff the surface. Don't go too wide at this point or you'll create more work for yourself later. It is best if you work across the area systematically to ensure an even finish. The more pressure you put on the pad, the more quickly you will remove the etch, but only use as much pressure as you can maintain evenly throughout the treatment. Remember this, even pressure, even finish. Spray on more water periodically as the surface dries out. It's normal for the water on the surface to become dirty and bubbly. Wipe it off and clean the surface now and then to check your progress and remove any debris from the surface that might cause scratching. Once you have gone over the affected area two or three times, you can move to the next grit. If you started with 100, you can move up to 200 for example. Or if you started with a higher grit, say 200, and it looks like the etch marks are unchanged after two or three passes, try going down to a lower grit, for example 100. If you notice scratches around the area you're working on, drop down a grit to repair them. It's likely that there is debris on the surface or the bottom of the pads, or your pressure isn't even enough. Clean the surface and the bottom of your pads before trying to repair the scratches. Repeat the process for each successive grit, all the way to 3000, if your counter was originally polished at 3000. With each grit, expand the area you're working on slightly. This will help blend in the appearance of the new and old surfaces. You can move the rag markers out gradually as you go to stop you going wider than you have to at each step. The whole process should take 15 to 25 minutes depending on how big the area is that you're trying to repair. It may take longer the first few times until you get the hang of it. And if it doesn't turn out perfectly, don't worry, you can always come back and try again another day. And voila, you're almost there. Once you're satisfied with the repair, we recommend that you reseal the repaired surface as the acids that cause the etch may also have broken down the penetrating sealer that protects your surface from staining and water penetration. If you choose not to reseal the affected area right away and are using Stone Tech Revitalizer, a cleaner and sealer reinforcement, as part of your daily maintenance routine, we recommend at a minimum that you treat and repair the surface with several applications of Revitalizer. Or, if you have chosen to maintain a beeswax paste coating on your surface for extra protection, you should also apply a fresh coat of wax to the affected area after applying the penetrating sealer. This will help restore the surface to match the original finish. And we're done! We hope this helped you out. If you still have questions or need help finding products, please don't hesitate to get in touch.